All right. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Still waiting. I found an interesting article that I thought we would talk about today, and um, I thought it was relevant to all of us because it's putting that college diploma to work. And um, since you're all going to be going into college and having to decide upon a major, it talks about um, what people should study in college. Should you study something that makes you happy? Or should you so uh, study something that offers good prospects for a job? So what do you think is more important? Should you be happy? Or should it be something that's going to offer a good job and maybe good money? Something that's good yeah. happy. Something that makes you happy? Yeah. yeah. Good money. yeah. If you don't have a good job, you don't be happy. You worry about your job, yeah. you don't have but when you have money, you're happy too, right? <laughs> well, you could be. But you know what? It's just like that article that you wrote the essay about, where people are constantly working to buy and buying and working, and they're never really happy. So that might not be the answer. Right? But we're going to read it, and we're going to see what this author has to say, and tell me what to think about it. But um, before, we, um, before we read the article, I'm going to introduce you to a component part of English that will help you in writing and reading, and it's called the passive voice. I don't know if any of you have heard, ever heard of it. You heard of the passive voice? Yeah. Okay. So, just to um, kind of give you an example, let's say I do this. What did I do? Give me, give me a sentence. What I, what just happened? No. No. No, just uh, just tell me what what I did using my name. Using my name. Um, um, Joe. Glenn. <laughs> Glenn. Glenn. Michael. Right. Okay. So. What's the subject in the uh, sentence? Who's, this, who's the uh, sentence about? Okay, right? So I am the subject. What's the verb in the sentence? Draw. Okay. Okay, so who's doing the action? Who's doing the action in the sentence? Me, hey, right? The subject, right? What if we do it again, and I ask you to give me a sentence, tell me what happened, but starting the sentence with pen. There you go. Very good. Very good, John. Okay, what's the verb in the sentence now? No. Okay. And what is the sentence about now? Is the sentence still about me? No, no. the action. Okay, the sentence is about the pen, right? So, in the first sentence, the subject, me, is active. I'm doing the action. The second sentence, the subject is passive, not doing the action, right? So that gives us an idea of the active voice and what we call the passive voice. Right. Why would we use why would we use the passive voice? Uh, to hide the, uh, to hide the subject. Not the okay, right. Okay. A lot of times when we're writing, the subject's not important. It's either not important or we don't know who it is. So in other words, if we took this out, the sentence is still OK, right? Because what we're really concerned about is the pen, not about me. But if we want to know who dropped it, then we can always put by and the person's name. So we could say that active sentences really answer questions about who. Tell us about who did something. 
and passive sentences really tell us about why. And a lot of times you'll hear passive voice when we talk about uh, that building was built in 1960. Doesn't matter who built it. We don't know who built it. Or um, you know, the car was made in Italy. You know, we don't know who made the car. So that's why we use the passive voice. When well, the car is important, not the who. Right? Okay. Okay, so the way we um, put the um, passive voice together is by having the past tense of the verb be followed by past participle. Anybody know what past participle is? Yes. Okay, what, what is that then? What is the past participle? When do we do Okay, past participle usually is the verb plus an ed. But there's also a lot of irregular past participles. So, so first of all, what we're going to do first is we're going to conjugate the verb to be. Because to make the passive sentence, we need to use the verb to be plus this past participle, all right? So, Let's just review the let's just review to be, because that's going to be part of what we're going to need to use, right? And let's do this in the present tense to start out. Okay, who can help me out with this? So present tense of today is I I am. You. I was, was right? Uh, okay, you were. And he, she, it was, right? Okay, so, and past participles for the most time is the main verb, like drop, right? The main verb here is drop, and usually in a regular verb, regular past participle, we add ed to the verb. So some of the verbs that we're going to see today are going to be regular. So if we have the verb learn, how would we form the past possible past possible of learn? If it's a regular verb. Learn. Learn, right? Okay. Okay. Okay, what about cool? Now, cool, cool is an interesting word. The reason why I'm using these words is because you're going to be seeing them later in one of the exercises. A cool could be a verb, or it could be a noun, right? The, um, uh, it could be an adjective. The ice cream is cool. Or you could say, we cool the ice cream in the refrigerator. So it could be a verb. So 
pet parcel of coal is coal. How about produce? Okay. All right, so you get an idea. So these are regular, these are regular verbs um, that form regular past participles. They have ED. A lot of them, though, are irregular. And some of the irregular ones that we're going to see today are verbs such as this. Eat. Okay, that is, that is where it gets a little complicated because Past possible, past possible for E is E. Has anybody ever seen that? No. Okay. Right. Okay. How about uh, fine? Anybody? What? Are you thinking of that? You know, fine. Down. Down? Down? And how about C? C. 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 Right? Okay. And one more. Cell? Cell? Cell. Cell. Very good, Nicole. Okay, great. Okay, so now, now that you have an idea of what the passive tense is, the pass, passive voice, okay, so it's going to be the, the subject, and one form of the uh, form of the verb to be, and then a past positive. So who could make a sentence using, let's pick another subject, using one of, the, one of these forms to be, and one of the past positive. How do we put a sentence together? Anybody? What do you think? Glenn, any ideas? Okay. What if we use a subject, let's see. How about we use a subject, the car? The car. How about the car? How about the car was? Okay, good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, that's good. I wasn't thinking of that because I see something else we could um, we could use that's on the board, but that's good. The car was crushed. What? It, you can just say the car was crushed, right? Matthew Walker. Right. Okay. Or what about uh, anything on here? We could say the car was sold. 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 The car was sold by Annie, or the car was just sold, right? Or how about we say the car was produced by There you go. Okay, so that gives you an idea, right? Okay. Okay. I'm gonna let you look at this article. We pass these around. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we were talking about this author that is suggesting maybe what you should major in, right? Ever wonder about the staying power of majors? Data was compiled on the trends of majors over the past several decades. While engineering holds steady, business and life sciences degrees have shot upward in popularity along with psychology. Humanities haven't fared as well. English, education, and literature are on the decline. Um, 
although it is known that some areas like engineering and nursing are stronger than ever, students need to plan. Dr. Paul Harrington, director of the Center for Labor Markets and Policy at Drexel University says, students need to focus and direct. It doesn't mean not to major in English. It means to organize your extracurricular activities. If you're interested in writing, get on the student newspaper or see if you can become a reporter for a local newspaper. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to cut the article right here, and um, let's go over a couple of the words here that maybe aren't familiar. Does anybody know what humanities are? Talks about humanities having fared as well. Anybody familiar with that? Humanities? When we talk about studying humanities in college? Humanities are usually subjects that deal with people versus science and math. So it could be. And, in there, and they have shown three examples, English, education, literature. Those are considered humanities. They have to do with people. Okay. And what about psychology? What does that word psychology remind you of? There's a lot of related words. What about psychology? Right, right, right. Psyche, right? It's yeah. about the brain. The study or, of the brain. Right, psyche is about the brain. Or uh, psychology is about the study of humans, the study of human behavior. Okay, do we see any passive voice in that first sentence? Yes. Where do we see it? Data was compiled. Great. What's data, Annie? Um, anybody else? Data? What do you think data is? Paula? Paul has the data. Hmm. Okay. Well, you know what? The easiest way to think about data is information. It's usually numbers. Data is usually numbers. It's usually people that put numbers together to figure things out. You know, they compile statistics, numbers, and that's usually what data is about. You know? um, so when we say it's compiled, it means information was gathered, was put together. And the reason why that's in the passive tense is because we don't know who compiled the data. So that was a good way to um, use that passive voice, data was compiled. Who did it is really not important, right? OK, and in the second paragraph that I just read, um, has anybody seen the passive voice in the second one? Brian? There you go. Okay, it is now. So it's not telling us who, right? It is known. Who knows it? We don't know. It is known by people. It is known by experts. Who knows it? We're not sure. So that's why passive voice was used there. And um, just one other word in that paragraph that I may bring to your attention. Extracurricular. Does anybody know what that means? Yeah. What's that? It's not school work. It's like outside of Things you do after school, right? Like sports, hobbies, right? Okay, we're going to move along. And I found this little passage which I'm going to hand out. And I'm going to ask you to get into pairs. And this is a short history of ice cream. I thought it was really an interesting article because it uses a lot of passive voices. And it's about something we all like, right? Okay. I still want to pass these around. Okay. Go into groups of two. Another one. Right. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use. <laughs> in the missing spaces, okay, we're going to put. The verb to be, this is also called, we call this an auxiliary verb or a helping verb. This works in conjunction with the past participle, right? So in the missing sentences, we're going to put the correct form of the auxiliary verb be and the past participle. Okay. 
Okay? And we're going to have 10 minutes to do that, okay? The, um, the verb that's there right now is the base form of the verb. Right? So those got to be put in the past part. And the irregular ones The irregular ones, guys, are all on the board. All the irregular past participles are here. The rest of them are all regular past participles.
Everybody understand? Yeah. Okay, so everybody's done? Yeah. yeah. All right, great. Okay. All right, so how about the first group, Ryan and Matthew, you're reading the first paragraph, okay? Macedonia. Yeah, Greece. Greece, right? Not Macedonians in Greece. Yeah. You got a Greek flag on your head, right? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Kind of. That's going to be too deadly. Okay. And who else do we have there? We have the Egyptian pharaohs. They were, of course, they were from Egypt. They were the rulers in ancient Egypt. Who else do we have? And Emperor Nero. Who's Emperor Nero? Emperor Nero. Oh. Emperor Nero? The Roman Emperor. Roman Emperor. Good. Very good. Very good. Yes. Yeah, I don't know what year, but ancient times. Yeah, probably thousands of years ago, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. 2,000 years ago. Annie and Nicole, you guys worked on this together? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So how about reading the second paragraph? Okay. Next one. Fresh milk. Real ice cream, we're talking about the real ice cream yes. was produced. So real ice cream it was produced. Was what? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Carol? Same? 
go to the place, right? Right. Okay, good. Very good. All right, next paragraph. Okay. You guys back there? Yeah. Very the patient is entered. Ice cream was eaten regularly at a Pelvin Metal Ice Cream Cafe in the restaurant. Uh, it is known, for example, that George Washington spent $200 on ice cream in just two months in 1790. Wow, that's a lot of money, that's especially, so much, especially, especially in 1790, right? Yeah. What is uh, fashionable, Wei? Like what? Fashionable. What do we mean by that? Fashionable? fashionable. Yeah, I should. Trendy. Uh, modern. Trendy. Fashionable ice cream. Yeah, probably where, where rich people yeah. went to cafes. Maybe there were cafes for rich people. What? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Trendy. 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 That's good too. Trendy, That's right? Paid, yeah. Trendy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we have one more paragraph, right? Yeah. Okay. So who's going to read? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Jenna, you want to read it? The cost was reduced when the first ice cream factory was opened in 1831 by another American New Jersey person, Fusso. Since the 19th uh, century, though, it has been the Italian who was. Italians? Great, very good. Very good, everybody. Okay, so we got a good idea of why passive tense was used. In most of these sentences, they weren't really concerned about who, they were concerned about what. Yes. Excellent ice cream is made, yeah, and enjoyed all over the world. Great. Okay, what I'm going to do is give everybody a um, copy, my copy, so you can take it and you can share with yours. Okay? And also, I made a little chart that you can use for future reference. And it will show you the construction or the formation, how we form the um, passive voice in the present tense and in the past tense by putting the subject, the form of to be, which is the auxiliary verb, and the past participle. All right, so we can pass through that also. This will be uh, good to review what we talked about today. Any questions about anything that we talked about today? It's pretty clear? Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Good. Okay? Yeah. So what's the main reason why people write in the passive voice? The main reason. Uh, right. The subject, sometimes we know the subject, like the pen was dropped by this, but the subject's not important, right? It's like this school opened, uh, the school was opened 20 years ago. We don't know who opened it, but it was open, right? So, okay, we get a good idea of that? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so I have a little activity for you to take home. And I don't know when I'm going to see you, but maybe you want to give it to Chella. Okay, yeah, sure. And this is a little story about the body found in the Black River. A lot of times a passive voice is used when it's very mysterious, when we don't know what happened. What's so funny? 
When we don't know what happened to that body, it was found in the Black River. A body of a woman of about 40 years old was found floating. We don't know who found her floating in the Black River yesterday afternoon. A traveling salesman reported the find at 4 in the morning. He called the police and the body was taken. We don't know who took it. To the county morgue. Does anybody know what a morgue is? No. A morgue? A morgue is a place you can pass me here. A morgue is a place where the city brings dead bodies. Wait, cemetery? No, before they go to the cemetery. A lot of times they go to a morgue uh, when the family has to come and claim them. You know, it's like if somebody dies in the street and they don't know who it belongs to, it will go to a morgue. So, yeah. Not a really pleasant place to visit. Um, okay, so a traveling salesman reported the find at 4 in the morning. He called the police, and the body was taken to the county morgue, where it will be examined by forensic scientists. Anybody ever hear of forensic scientists? No. Forensic scientists, no, nobody? Forensic scientists are people that try to figure out a crime how somebody died, how somebody got killed. A lot of times just a lot of times you'll see TV shows. Yeah, CSI is a great one. Yeah, they put all the clues together to try to figure out and they examine the body. They do an autopsy where they cut the body open after it's dead to kind of figure out what the body What's that? Oh, an investigator, right. He's sort of an, yeah, he's an investigator, right. He investigates the causes of the death, yeah, okay. This is the third body that has been found in the Black River since the beginning of the year. There are theories that organized crime has been using the river to get rid of unwanted competition. So organized crime is, what do we mean by organized crime? Mafia. 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 Similar occurrences or happenings has been reported in other nearby towns. However, many people think it was a suicide. So what I'd like you to do with this exercise is write down the active verbs on the left, the passive verbs on the right, and rewrite the, rewrite the passage, changing the story into an active voice story. So, in other words, like say the first sentence says the body of a woman was found. You might want to say um, a passing driver found the body of a woman. That's how we change it. We ask the voice. So it answers the question, who? Right now we're not answering the question. Okay? Okay. Sound good? Yeah, good. Okay. Any questions with anything else? No, no. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. <laughs> Do it now. You have 10 minutes. Okay. And you need 40 something minutes of video, right? Okay. All right, so let's take the first sentence. The body of a woman of about 40 years was found floating in the Black River yesterday afternoon. Okay. What is, what verbs do we see there? Found. Um, okay, was found floating, right? Yeah. Was found. So let's write that in our passive verb column. Okay. All right. And you want to read the next, um, next sentence? County. 
fork. Okay. Everybody know who traveling salesmen are? What is traveling salesmen? Any idea from the words? Wow, what do you think, Roy? You seem like you know. Like Yeah. Trader. Okay. What? Trader. Um, well, a trade, a trader, a trader. Yeah. Somebody that trades things with somebody. Yeah. Um, no, because he's not really trading. He's selling things. You know, usually when you trade, one person gives something uh, to somebody, and the other person gives something else back to them. That's usually what trading is about. What do we mean by traveling salesman? What do you think? Nicole, you have any idea? Traveling salesman typically is somebody that is on the road and they sell something maybe from maybe even from door to door. A lot of times they sell people, they sell things from door to door, or they get in their truck or their car and they sell things from town to town. Right, that could be a traveling salesperson, right? Okay, so what are the verbs that we see in there? Okay, reported. Is that active or passive? Active, right? Okay, great. Um, what else do we see in there? Fall. Fall. Okay. So we're going to write these in our active verb, right? Column? Okay. All right. So he called the police and the body. Most dangerous. And what type of voice? Active or passive? Passive. Passive. Good. So the county walk, we are it. Will be. Examine. So, what, what type of verb is that? Active. Passive. Passive. Why is that passive? Because it would be examined by the word to check. Okay. The victim hasn't been identified yet. This is the third body. All right, who wants to read this sentence? <laughs> Wait. This is the third body that has been found in the Black River. Yeah. Uh, theories. 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 That organized the crime has been using the river to get rid of the unwanted competition. Okay. What are what are theories? You're familiar with the word? Theories. Theories. What do you think? Yeah, sort of, right. A theory of something. Right, a theory is like a, uh, like a, like a, like an educated guess. Like when somebody has a good guess, it's a theory. You know, right. It's not really, it's not really proven, but it's a pretty good, pretty good guess, right? Okay. All right. So what, um, what verbs do we see in that paragraph? Okay, what is that? Passive or active? Passive. Passive, okay, very good. Okay. And what else do we see? Organized. Organized. Yeah, organized. It's active or active or active. Yes. Or organized crime in that no, no, no. in that sense, organized crime. Organized is in that sense is an adjective because it's explaining what kind of crime it is. So that's a little confusing, but organized is discussing the type of crime. Okay. It's not unorganized crime, it's organized crime. And the last sentence, similar occurrences. And what type of what type of voice is that? Passive. Passive, okay. Great. Very good. Okay, so how can we change the first sentence to, I gave you one clue before, but how can we change the first sentence to an active one? The body of the woman. How can we reword that and make that active? That's what it's 
found the body of that woman? Very good. Yeah. The police found the body of a woman about 40 years old. Great. Okay. Okay. And how about another, the uh, next passive verb was when, in the next uh, paragraph, when the body, uh, when he called the police. Right. How can we change that to active? Bob, any ideas? We can say, for example, we call the police and the action killed the body. You could say that, or you know what? Probably what would make sense in that sentence, too? He called the police. What, t what usually takes a body, a body somewhere? When they're dead or when they get hurt or sick? Yeah, but what's the, the vehicle? What takes them there? Ambulance. That would be a good word for that. He called the police and an ambulance took the body to the county morgue. I think that's probably what would take the body to the morgue. Okay, and uh, let's see. What else can we change to active? Okay, in the third paragraph, this is the third body. Third paragraph. This is the third body. How do we change that to the active voice? Will we answer the question who? What do you think, Jenna? The third body. Third paragraph. This is the third body that has been found. How can we change that to active voice? Answering who? Glenn, any ideas? No ideas? Yeah. Okay, that is that is a different tense. Today we were talking about the present tense and the past tense. And this is But this is the present voice. Yes, but it's a different tense. I'll go over that with you. In the third, in the third sentence, um, this is the third body that has been found. Okay, the reason why that says has been found and not was found is because that's the perfect, that's the present perfect tense. So it means that it was found, it's been this is the third body that was found over a period of time. So how can we change that to answer the question who? How about, what do you think, Todd? How about the... Uh, Witnesses have been found. Okay. Witnesses found. This is the third body that witnesses found. Yeah. Great. Okay, great. Okay. And the last... Sentence here, similar occurrences. Any ideas on that? Who could have reported these similar occurrences? Police. Police. Have, yeah. Right, you could say that. Police, um, police reported similar occurrences in nearby towns, right? Yeah. Great. Okay. All right, so any questions? Okay. How about you, Matt? Did everything clear to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.